Well, good afternoon. Um, this is a pleasure to welcome you here today. Uh, this morning, earlier today, we had a live YouTube conference call with all of our principals, assistant principals, and district leaders. And one of the suggestions that we had was that we were going to copy or to use some of the same materials to all of our teachers. So uh, Mr. Henrik, our Associate Superintendent for Teaching and Learning is here. Uh, as we face the most unprecedented times, uh, our health issues and health crisis over the next few weeks, one of our lifts is going to be as a school district to ensure the continuity of instruction. Um, this instruction will be taking place digitally. It will be a challenge for many of us. Um, our students will probably be the, the, the ones that will be the most relaxed on it. And, and as we move this, this uh, type of instruction um, out, I want to provide some advice and say let's go slow. Uh, let's take it easy. Let's not try to overdo it this week. Uh, and uh, it will be more of a transition to digital learning environment. And then next week, March 30th, starts more subject area and um, s subject area and grade level specifics. So with that, we wanted to cover some of the details specifically with teachers. I want to start out by saying thank you to teachers. Thank you for your flexibility and thank you for your leadership. Um, our community looks to the educators of its, uh, of its school district to lead and very much during difficult times. And this will be one of those times. So thank you very much for your efforts. Um, let's relax. Let's stay calm. Let's uh, relax about the format that we're about to, to take place. And, and let's uh, try to learn from this and use it as a learning experience, too. So with that, it gives me great pleasure to um, not only introduce but to thank Mr. Hendrick for not only his work but all of the executive directors, all the managers, everyone that over the last few weeks has transformed our entire school district into uh, what we're about to embark on as a digital platform. So Mr. Hendrick, welcome. Thank you, Dr. Grego. Uh, so it's my pleasure to be here to share a little bit of information uh, directly with teachers and try to answer some of your questions. I know some of you have participated in the online trainings, whether they've been the taped webinars or attempted to do some of the live sessions on Monday. So I wanna go through just some of the resources we have available for you, uh, answer some of your questions, ease some of your fears, and make sure that you're ready to go this week. So I wanna start out by saying, what is this week? This week of March uh, 23rd, it is Academic Enrichment Week. And so what does that mean for you as a teacher? Well, we have put up on every school website, and you see one on the screen there, uh, a button for schools or for families and students to click on for academic enrichment. There is no expectation that this week, the week of March 23rd, you are creating assignments for your students, uh, that you're monitoring what they're doing at home, anything like that. This week is strictly for you to be prepared for the week of March 30th and beyond. And so this week we have the ability for school or for students to engage online and we want them to get ready. So we've sent out this website that you see, the, the student and family digital learning website. Uh, as of Sunday night, over 55,000 hits this week by families who are looking to say, what do I need to do to engage in digital learning at my home? So we have those four bars there that you see. They need a device, internet connection, their log on, and they need to get into Clever. And as all of you know, our students are very familiar with getting into Clever, so that's gonna be an easy task for them to do. But if you scroll down a little bit on that site, you're gonna see uh, the buttons that show us the academic enrichment activities that we have for students this week. And there's four buttons there. Uh, we'll go ahead and click on one of them and show you what that looks like. And essentially, it's just a PDF that shows that the main activity on the left there is to start the spring break challenge if they haven't done so already. So your schools have set up a spring break challenge uh, all across the district, and we're asking students and families to continue in, to engage in that challenge. It features different activities that they can do, some of them digital, some of them uh, sort of traditional, using textbooks and even the outdoors a little bit. Then on the right, you'll see the opportunity for personalized learning. They can go into their PLP, their personalized learning pathway, and explore that. But we also have kind of a neat option uh, that's a little bit different is to go on to Clever and to go into the EverFi button. And they click on EverFi and we have a challenge for them there based on their grade band. So the, for K2, it's sort of an alphabet and phonemic awareness and phonics challenge that they do a, a search for words and things like that. 
Uh, this one for grades three through five is a financial literacy challenge. You get to middle school and it's a STEM careers challenge. These are really great simulations online, sort of gamified that students can do. Um, if you hear from a student that says, hey, I couldn't get into there, um, once they click in EverFi, they just have to click a little blue button that says click here to start the challenge and to get to the different courses available in EverFi. Some of our teachers use that resource now, uh, but it's new for most of our teachers. So that's what students are going to be doing uh, this week as they also come to your school and get a digital device and prepare uh, to participate in uh, course by course and class by class learning that will start out uh, on March 30th. So undoubtedly you've probably been to our educator website uh, for digital learning and we've certainly got a lot of hits on that this week and hopefully you've been there uh, to get yourself organized and ready for this particular week. So I want to hit on a couple of highlights there and we'll come back to some of them in a few moments. Uh, but the first link is that educator instructional continuity guide. We're going to dig into that in deep here in a few minutes. Uh, but that link is there to connect you to that resource that is found in SharePoint. The next link uh, is the Microsoft Teams link. Microsoft Teams, of course, is where we're going to be doing all of our instructing over the course of this uh, close down of physical visiting school, but we'll still be holding it online. So we'll click on that link and I want to walk you through some of the things that are available to you there. I want to start by showing you the yellow bar that's across uh, the screen there, and that gives you a schedule of online technical help that you can get this week. So if we click on the right uh, side of that, there's, it says schedule, that'll pop open, and you're going to see digital office hours that are available for you to get on with the digital learning team uh, which is Dr. Connie Colosi, who's the head of digital learning, and she has uh, four folks that work with her to help, and you'll see their names listed there, and they are available during those hours uh, to assist you with any technical questions you have about Teams or maybe another digital resource that's online. So these are not presentations where you're logging on and listening, but it's simply like you're walking into the office and saying, hey, how do I create an assignment? How do I upload this document? How do I record this so that my students can see it? You can ask them there and they'll either direct you to the right resource or they'll show you how to do it. Now back to the team site. Um, most of you are, are, have watched this first video, which is the start here, um, remote learning through Microsoft Teams. It's about a 30 minute webinar uh, in which you can kind of get the big picture overview of how to operate your new classroom digitally. So we want you to watch that, of course. And below that, the next thing we want you to take a look at are the top 10 tips and tricks document. And that document has, of course, 10 items which you can use to kind of get yourself up to speed within Microsoft Teams. So the very first one, which is a question a lot of you will have, how do I add a co-teacher in my team or in my class? And so the first tip shows you how to do that. Uh, you may want to add in an ESE associate. Uh, CDA, perhaps a, a co-teacher that you have or you work with together. Uh, a lot of you are going to be adding in your administrators in there to help you with that. So that's the first tip. You can go through though and you'll find lots of other things on there uh, like how do I control a live meeting, how do I upload assignments, things like that. So be sure to peruse this resource, it'll be very helpful. Back to the SharePoint site itself, uh, below the top 10 ticks, uh, tips and tricks you're going to find a section for students. Uh, that we'll get to a little bit later, uh, but it shows all the resources that students have. There's also, uh, before that student section, a few more in-depth videos that you can view uh, to help you along, but then you'll see the student section. We've posted these on the public website, which we'll show again in a few minutes, uh, but all the things that students will need to get up and running. But at the very bottom of the page is sort of the document library, and that document library contains all kinds of resources that you may need. Uh, such as how do I record myself uh, on my desktop, or perhaps how do we uh, use the accessibility tools in the Microsoft Office suite, such as text-to-speech and things like that for students who need accommodations. So I really want you to dig into this website, uh, this SharePoint, and find all the resources there. We will, of course, be updating this over the course of the next days and weeks to make sure you have the things that you need uh, to be successful in your classroom. Moving from there, um, I want to touch on the Educator Continuity Guide, which I hope you've taken a look at. Uh, it is linked on the public website, and I am going to take some time to go through this because um, this handbook was built by our team to make sure that you sort of have everything you need and answer a lot of questions 
as we go into this uh, new space. So the first part I want to show you is just the table of contents. Um, you're going to see all the things there that perhaps uh, you, know, you can just click and, and go right to. But let's go down to page four of that document and start by just showing you those helpful websites and resources one more time. Uh, we've tried to build this document so that it's a space where you can go back and find these things over and over again. You'll lose the link to the SharePoint site or you might lose the link to the gateway. We want to make sure that you have these things at your fingertips. Uh, so we've been to the public websites and the SharePoint. Let's go ahead and click on the gateway link and have that uh, take us out to the gateway. This is going to take you to the spot where you would normally find all of your curriculum resources. And on the left-hand side where it says curriculum resources, the content specialists across our district are building in a link when you click on one of those. So go ahead and click on first grade, if you will. And that'll open us up. You choose the subject, go ahead and click math. And you'll see there's a folder already there under units for instructional continuity resources. So every subject across our district are building these resources. And it's a spot for you to find online digital tools, other things that perhaps if you're stuck on an assessment or, or a standard and you're saying, what am I going to do next week? We'll have these things in there for you. And they'll be building out uh, over the course of the next week. So please go back and visit that gateway site and take a look at your particular content area. But back to the instructional continuity guide, we want to take a look at the technical assistance part on page four. You'll notice that again on the guide, we've listed the places where we have help for you, um, those office hours, and we'll be building out more of these. And so you'll find these on that SharePoint site for Microsoft Teams. But if we flip over to page five, what we've done for on page five and six is really try to give you an outline for this week of what are some suggested activities that you may want to do. So you're going into your school, you're picking up your, tech, your uh, textbooks, power cords, laptop, other personal things that you might need. And then you're going to be digging into the Microsoft Teams SharePoint site, looking at that intro video, the top 10 tips and tricks, and those in-depth videos, and just starting to make yourself as familiar with those as possible. Meanwhile, on Monday, your school will be making a plan to uh, deliver devices to students, and your principal may have a faculty meeting perhaps that first Monday. On Tuesday, uh, for sure, you'll have a faculty meeting, probably through Microsoft Teams, and you'll begin to activate your Teams, your classes in Microsoft Teams. You can certainly do that on Monday, or but by Tuesday, we want to do that. And also, don't forget, you do need to complete your third quarter grades in focus as re the regular report card schedule uh, will follow, and you'll need to get those done by Friday. And then you'll start building assignments online for your students. By Wednesday, a real key thing for you to do is we need you to build that first assignment. And in fact, we've laid that out for you on the Microsoft Teams site, exactly how to do that first one. And that first thing is just to simply ask a one question poll of, for your students, are they in Microsoft Teams? You'll give them a little welcome message, they'll click on it, and it'll let you know if they've been able to access the site. So they have the technology, they're into Teams, and they've clicked on the poll. So your principal will send out something to your, your students to say, hey, take a look in Teams and answer your teacher question. And then you'll know by Thursday, uh, a key action is for you to report back to your principal in whatever manner they've asked you to do uh, what students have not responded so that the student services teams at your school and others will be able to reach out to families and find out what is the need to get students online and into Microsoft Teams. By Friday, you'll finish up those third quarter grades if you've not done it. You'll have built out your first week of lessons, and you'll probably have a, a last a final faculty meeting that you'll engage in on Friday. And then come Monday, uh, you'll be ready to start, and you'll have that uh, first day of, of live lesson or first day of online lessons that you'll be ready with. So some key notes for you in terms of hours of operations, um, and you'll hear this from your principal as well, but the workday for teachers is 8.30 to 3.30, like a pro-ed day. And we expect you to be available online for students to respond to chats in your general channel uh, and answer questions from 9 to 11.30 and then from 1 to 3.30. So two and a half hours in the morning, two and a half hours in the afternoon. And the expectation, especially the first week, is asynchronous instruction, meaning not at the same time. 
We do not expect for you to be doing live lessons and certainly streaming to students the first week. Um, we expect that you're using the assignments tabs, that you maybe have recorded a lesson, you've uploaded that, but certainly not uh, that you are working live on the first day. And we'll talk more about some first day expectations in just a few moments. Going through the, uh, some other key things in this Educator Instructional Continuity Guide, um, you'll see a section there about online professionalism and working from home and just background noise and things like that. So take a look at that. We have the schedule and hours again on there. Um, and as you get into live lessons and you're scheduling meetings with your students, there may be uh, the occasion that is appropriate to work outside of that 8.30 to 3.30 and your principal will give you permission and then adjust your hours accordingly. But as a school, all schools, K-12, will operate from 8.30 to 3.30 and your principal can work with you if, if it needs to be something outside of that. On the bottom of page six, we talk about live lessons um, and we say you're encouraged and eventually should host live lessons for your students, but certainly not each day. Um, and those live lessons will take place in the Teams meeting function where you'll get some practice this week and next week in running those things so that you can facilitate that. It's gonna take a lot of skill to facilitate a live meeting. So we don't want you to think that you need to do that right away. Think about you've gotta show the content and then you also um, need to facilitate management of student behavior who are chatting um, and asking questions. And so that, that's gonna take some practice. So for the first week, for sure, we don't expect that to happen, but you can start to practice that for later on. Um, on page seven, you're gonna see more about online learning and resources, daily lessons, are the textbooks available, uh, things like that. But I wanna draw your attention again to the bottom of page seven about those instructional continuity resources. You're gonna find those on the Gateway site for all of the subject areas across our district. On the bottom of page seven, we talk about attendance. This is a key function that we need to take attendance each day. You're gonna do that in focus like you normally would, and any interaction from students will qualify. And we're gonna suggest to you that you put that poll up each day so that it's a simple check-in. The student enters your class, they click the one question poll, and then you'll have a spreadsheet to make sure that you have that recorded. That'll be time stamped. Um, and there's a lesson on the Microsoft Teams site to show you that. And we'll probably send out more information later in the week about taking attendance. But to be clear, you don't need to do any of that this week. That'll start on March 30th. Flipping over, you'll see some sections on grading and assessments. Yes, you can do assessments online. You can use the Performance Matters assessments that are already there. We'll be providing some webinars for you on that as well. Uh, but as we go through the rest of the guide, and you look uh, back at the table of contents or you scroll through it, you're gonna see a lot of uh, support for English language learners, for exceptional student education, for unique positions like school counselors and social workers and uh, student services staff, career technical education. And then we have a couple of appendices in this document as well, um, including like how to create an announcement in Teams. So there's lots of resources there for you. We really built this for teachers so that you had some answers to start out because we know you'll have a lot of questions and those questions can continue to come in. You can email me, you can email your uh, content specialist, um, certainly your principals and those in your building as well. But we want you to know that we're here to answer those questions and this guide was really built to help you get started, answer some of those initial questions about what you need to do. So some, just some additional information, particularly on the first week of school. I want to be real clear um, that we really don't, you don't need to experiment with live lessons. Try to record a lesson, make it a good one, uh, try to get it so that you're proud of it and you can upload it to your students. Uh, that's our recommendation for the first week. We also want to share with you that those recordings should really be 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, anything beyond 30 minutes is really too long. Think about a lecture in your classroom. You would stop after six or seven minutes anyway and engage the students uh, at, at, uh, at some way or, or form, and you can do that online as well. Um, in terms of live lessons and when to do them and will you follow the regular schedule of the school day, your principal will be sharing with you a schedule. Uh, we've given them a number of options that they can tailor to the needs of your school, but we don't also don't want multiple teachers trying to compete for, hey, I want this particular time and you take that time and now we're pitting schools or teachers against each other for a lesson time. We also need to be reminded, and this is an important factor, that students are working from home 
They may have siblings in the house also working. Um, their parents are going to be at home potentially working. They may not have a lot of free space in the home. So having a lot of live lessons in one day is not a good idea for families either. So we want to make sure that there's asynchronous learning, that there's the ability for students to go on and do assignments that you've done, but that it's not overwhelming for families just to operate in a space at home. And to that end, um, the learning that you think about for students, if, if let's say in a secondary school, but it would apply in elementary as well, if we gave them a, a 30 or 45 minute lesson in every class every day, you're looking at you know, 49 lessons in a week, that would be way more than they would do in a regular school week when you factor in transitions and going to lunch and all of those other things that happen. So we wanna keep the expectations reasonable and fair. We don't wanna be overzealous too soon. Uh, sort of less is more that first week as families and you figure out the best way to manage expectations in this new digital environment. So think about the first day uh, on March 30th, and I want you to go perhaps maybe to August 14th, the start of school or, or a similar day, and think about when you meet with your principal, what does your principal say to you about what's a good successful first day of school, right? On a normal, regular old start of school, we'd say, well, we get every kid a schedule, uh, we feed every student, and we get them on the bus and we get everybody home. That's a good, successful first day of school. So what makes a good, successful first day of digital online instruction on March 30th? Um, number one, we take attendance. Number two, we give some sort of assignment with real reasonable expectations. And number three, less is more. Keep the expectations such that we know that this is a building process. We're not all gonna be experts the first day. So that first day, let's take attendance. Let's give some sort of reasonable assignment and then we'll be fine and we'll move to the next day and the next day and the next day and we'll keep that going. So we wanna make sure that this guide and the things that you're getting from your principal, clear expectations for you and you can certainly reach out to me or any of our folks here in teaching and learning to help you with that. Just a few more things, we'll go back to the student website uh, real quick. I showed you the um, academic expectations for enrichment but also on there are the instructions for Microsoft Teams for students, and then also a parent guide that actually Microsoft put together that we've linked there for them. So that's where the students will go, and they're eager to get started. Some of them are already sending you messages and asking questions in Teams. It's gonna be exciting for them. Um, so to wrap this up, I, I just wanna bring you back to the start of the instructional uh, guide on page three. There's a message from me to all of our teachers in our district, just, reassuring you that this is going to be a, le a learning and a growing experience for all of us and that we can uh, sort of guide ourselves by two of our core values that we have in our school district that we operate under all the time. Our commitment to children, families, and the community, as Dr. Grego said before, is unwavering and we will continue that in this new space and time. We know that there will be hurdles, but we'll continue that commitment and I commend each one of you for your commitment there. And second, that respectful and caring relationships. So many of us became teachers because we cared about kids and we loved forming those great relationships with them. And that's gonna continue. It's gonna continue now digitally, but we will have to be that person who continues that caring relationship that we know sometimes we may be the only ones doing that for some of our students. So keep that up, keep a positive attitude, less is more. We're here to support you along the way. I wanna thank you for your uh, commitment and contributions as we've gone through this transition. All of your questions, your suggestions have been welcome. And we look forward to continuing to support you in the next several days, weeks, and months ahead. Good luck. Reach out to us. We're here to help.